Hi everyone and happy Friday. I'm Carrie Tucker and I'm Tara Undershoot and we are Realtors with Century 21 Fusion here in Saskatoon and we're back with another Friday Five and we are on a field trip this week. We are. So we are in a basement of a home and yeah. we're talking about mechanical room stuff. Yeah. And we have a special guest with us today. We do. One of our uh, trusted business partners from Amerispec Home Inspection Services. This is Darcy Undershoot. Hi everyone. And yes, he is my husband. <laughs> so uh, we have Darcy trapped in a uh, basement mechanical room like Carrie said. <laughs> And we're going to ask him some questions about the items that we typically find in this room and some tips and uh, the questions that are asked during home inspections. Definitely. Yeah. So we are going to kick it off with the furnace, I think, hey? Sounds good. Okay. Um, typically what you see now in most homes is the high efficient furnaces. A um, little more finicky. You got to maintain a few things in them. Um, furnace filters are, are the biggest one. Uh, make sure you change your furnace filters. You can, uh, I find the best ones to use are like the cheap ones with the big pleats. Um, just change them more often. Uh, you can also use reusable ones and just clean them out. A bit more of a pain, but uh, um, the cheap ones allow air to flow better, I find. And, uh, and it's, so it's easier on the systems of the furnace itself. And you don't have to clean them. Yeah. <laughs> just throw them out. Just throw them out. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, how do you know when it's time to change your furnace filter? Well, have a look. Just the, a lot of them have a compartment like this. You just pull the furnace filter out and just see how dirty it is and uh, and just throw in a new one. Or if you notice like your house is a little more dusty than normal or something. Sometimes like too, yeah, absolutely. Once you get into a house, you kind of figure it out on how often you need to change your filters. Okay. Um, other things in furnaces like these are flame sensors. Uh, they do get dirty and they need to be cleaned every so often. Uh, sometimes it's every year. Sometimes you can get away with a couple of years. Um, sometimes they're easy to get to and you can do it yourself. Or sometimes you have to call a qualified technician to do them. Um, other things are just keeping a visual on your furnace. Um, just taking a look, making sure there's no moisture in the, uh, in the furnace itself. This one has had some some uh, moisture oh, in the past. The um, the rust. Uh, rust there. Yeah. Okay. And so it's things like that. Like if any moisture, if you ever do not notice moisture, call a uh, qualified technician. Just because that moisture could get down to the main brain below, and that's an expensive part to repair. So mm -hmm. just just visual maintenance too is uh, is a big key. Okay. All right. Cool. So next we have the next biggest component is yeah. the water heater. The water heater. We're seeing more and more uh, tankless water heaters, especially in new homes, but yeah. this is obviously a tank. Your original, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. your co more, co more common one that you see. So um, what is uh, a tip you have about this, Stars? Well, water heaters, we're lucky in, in our area just because our water is so good. So it tends to make them last a little longer. Okay. Kind of an average lifespan of a water heater is about 20 years in our area. Okay, we're lucky. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely not like Regina. <laughs> but to get that 20 years, you do have to do a little bit of maintenance. Um, probably the biggest thing with these is to drain them once a year uh, and let the sediments that come out of the water. So drain it out of here? Yeah. Okay. And you can drain them into your floor drain or a bucket. Um, but that allows the sediments that are in the water to come out because those sediments, when they sit down at the bottom of the tank, they can be corrosive. Okay. And so that can shorten the lifespan of your water heater. Also with your temperature settings, just make sure that you're, you're keeping it below. Well, once you move in anyway, you'll find out, but try to not to go past the B. Um, if you get too hot, you can actually scald yourself at the faucets. So if you have children, it's a, it's a tough setting. But the hotter you turn it up, probably the less lifespan you have on your water heater itself. What is your, what setting do you recommend leaving it at B? Yeah, like f for this one here, it's, it's kind of in between the A and the B. Okay. And, uh, but once you move into a house and you have showers or, or baths, you kind of figure out figure where out you like your settings. Okay. So. All right, cool. Okay, next up is the electrical panel. And so, uh, are we all in here? There we go, <laughs> sorry. The, uh, yes, with, the, yeah. <laughs> with the electrical panel, uh, what are some words of wisdom here, some words of advice? There's no real maintenance to do, uh, a visual of them. Just make sure that there's no water coming in anywhere or condensation okay. on them. But make sure that the panels are snug and secure with the proper screws. 
You don't want to use pointed screws in them, um, flat end screws. Okay. And make sure that all your, uh, your knockouts are all in place in the front of the panel as well as the sides of the panel. Oh, like the little holes and stuff on the side? Yeah. Okay. So just where so there's that, nothing hooked up to those breakers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just so that no the fingers can go in there and, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> cause damage. But that, they're... They're, they're pretty easy, so. Okay. Well, another thing is to make sure that it's uh, labeled. Right? Uh -huh. This one's yeah. labeled nicely. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we go and you see, lots of times we were saying that, like, that you see them labeled with pencil and it's and all over faded. You have no idea. Yeah. So maybe a tip would be to uh, sit down and make a list <laughs> of uh, what's all there and have yeah. that handy. Get have a, a Friday night party get a buddy labeling the electrical. Bottle of wine. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Good times, eh? Yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what we do for fun in the <laughs> enter shoot houses. We create our labels. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay, so not every house has this, but um, newer homes are, are t you typically see them. But uh, that's the HRV system. So what can you tell us about that? What is it? Um, it basically it's it's moving air, supplying fresh air for your house, and taking the the bad air out. Um, on the inside of them is the air exchanger itself. So what happens is the fresh air comes in and crosses over with the old air that's leaving. So it kind of heats up the new air coming into the house, so your furnace doesn't have to work too as hard to heat the to heat the air. Um, they have filters, and the filters should be washed uh, on a regular basis. So keep an eye on those. If you're using uh, liquid to wash them, especially in the winter, make sure they're dry. Completely dry. Completely dry, because if they're wet, they'll just freeze right up, and then this thing does not work anymore. It could also cause mold too, right? If they're wet? Well, yeah, it could. Yeah. Um, the core can be washed as well. Does it, it's not something you need to do. Like this one has the cleaning instructions right on it. But uh, it should be done on a regular basis. Okay. So the insides of these don't all look like that, right? No. Nope. No, there's very... Fairly simple, but like very similar to this one. But yeah. Not exactly okay. like that. So, I mean, depending on what it is, they all have filters, though, that need to be cleaned regularly. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And in order for them to work properly. And yep. typically, like, for those that don't know what this is in their house, it, like Darcy said, it's an air exchanger, and it's ran, or it's run from the bathrooms. Bathrooms and the, and the kitchen, kitchen sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. instead of having the individual fans with the switch in each of those rooms. Yeah. So, yep. and it is more common, it, we see it... Uh, in the newer builds now. Yeah. So what I did learn the other day, and maybe you told me this, but not all, uh, it's not code. Like it doesn't have to have it right. in right. the house, yeah. right? So, but typically we are seeing it in the newer builds. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, one thing that has become code is the sub pump. And so um, around, thank you, around <laughs> 2006, 2006, no. I can't see you. Yeah, there, okay, let's, see, this is what happened, we're, guys, we're in real life here, we're actually, we don't have a camera crew, so, um, around 2006, 2007, the sump pumps became code to have an all new builds, right? Yeah. And so explain, uh, the 30 second commercial on what a sump pump is. A sump pump just collects the water that comes down into your weeping tile that's around right. your house. Yeah. And then it... I got your it, slippers, Tara. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Darcy, go ahead. <laughs> so it, it, then it carries the water out of the house and, and hopefully far enough away where it's not coming right back down and recycling and, and doing it again. So. Okay. Okay, and so this is what the cover of a sump pump looks like. Uh, there's the cover right there. So there's little <laughs> holes in there. Um, and be careful that little guys don't uh, drop anything down there. I know in our house, our son used to throw socks down there. Hmm. So that was fun. We found a salamander in ours one time. Really? Yeah. Oh, boys wow. loved it. They All wanted it for a pet. <laughs> yeah. So, you Fish know, tank. what is your tips? <laughs> what are some tips about the sump pump? Uh, just keep an eye on it. If there's, in certain areas, um, some pumps will run more than in other areas. Yeah. Um, so if you find that, say your sump pump is running quite often, uh, it probably doesn't hurt to get a battery back up just in case a storm happens and that's when you would really want it to yeah. work, right? It's usually when the water's the power come goes in. out. Yeah. So, your pump's not so something like that. But and if they don't work all the time, uh, test them. You can pour water in them. Um, some have a float. Some are pressure activated. There's two different, like two different, typically two different typically, kinds yeah. of pumps. Yeah. Okay. So 
and and uh, and just so make sure that they work properly okay and that they're draining so the in right a spot. in a basin like this where there's a this is super convenient to test this right because there's water right here yeah so you run a hose down in there and you can or pour water whatever fill it up so once the water is covering the pump in in It'll theory trigger. it should turn on yeah okay yeah both kinds of Pumps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see that the flow pump kind of looks like what's in your toilet, say, for instance. Okay, okay. So, okay, cool. All right. Well, that's your sump pump and your electrical panel and your hot water heater and your furnace. So, uh, some good tips and explanations of things that are found in the mechanical room. Uh, so, thank you very much, Darcy, Thanks, for Darcy. being in our Friday Five. And uh, we, you know, if you have any other questions about stuff like this, give us a call. Give Darcy a call. Uh, he's happy to answer any questions. And uh, if you're ever needing a home inspection when you're purchasing your home, he's your guy. So uh, make sure to give him a call. So uh, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed our video and hope you have a wonderful weekend. And we'll yes. see you next week. We'll see you on our next Friday Five. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.